Okay, you see the bottom rail. The bottom rail comes up and goes, connects to the carburetor at the top, which is just a fuel vent. The top rail is the fuel inlet. See? And then the bottom rail on this side goes to the canister. So the bottom rail goes to the fuel vent, comes down, goes to the carbon canister. I'll take a picture of that. The top rail is the two fuel inlets at the bottom of the bowls. So the top rail is the fuel inlet right there. See that? And here's the top rail again. Let's back up. Fuel inlet. Okay, we're going to get some of this garbage out of our way so I can work on this rear carburetor that's leaking. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, um, just want to make a video. There's not many videos on these things. Um, my rear carb was leaking out of the intake. So, either my float is not adjusted right or the needle valve is clogged. I don't know. So, I removed the fuel rails that are in the way and the emissions and all that garbage. It was easy. Here's, the, here's my floats down there hanging. This thing was, this is my float bowl. This thing was horrendous. It had so much sediment in it and I'm still not done cleaning it. As you could see the, the rusty uh, sediment still there. So what I'm going to do is um, I bought a rebuild kit. I'm going to change the float, adjust the height properly, 0.625 from the surface that the gasket rests on to the bottom of the float. And, uh, you know, the valve seems okay. Hear it? But it could still be leaking. And I, I attach this blue fuel line here because once you take your fuel line off your, uh, fuel pump it just keeps dripping forever and ever and ever so just I put this temporary fuel line my son gave it to me to uh, just to keep the height high enough because so gravity doesn't keep letting that leak if we come over here you could see I have I brought the nitro fill float can never sink can never fill with gas because it's solid the gasket the rebuild kit is here here's the new uh, this is the new uh, Inlet valve, needle valve I'm going to be putting in, and that's about it. Oh, uh, thermostat, and the battery mat I bought here. So here's the rebuild kit, there's the part number, MS577B, for a CD175. Uh, so let's hope this goes well. Oh, very important, these are the tools I used to... Uh, get the float bowl off you gotta have a lot of patience you need a mirror and a flashlight this is just a ratcheting one where you can put a flathead bit in see but it's too thick at the end so I had to make this one I just used a small what is that quarter inch closed end and I put my bit in and there's a piece of duct tape around it let me tell you something this is a great tool because you can only, on that rear middle screw, you can only rotate it a quarter of a turn at a time. So you have to take the bit out and rotate it 90 degrees, put it back in the tool, then go use it. Then take, then, you know, move the screw a quarter of a turn. Then take the bit out, rotate it a quarter of a turn, then move the screw a quarter of a turn. But you know what? It works. You just have to use a mirror. I'll come over here. I have the nightstick flashlight. You need a flashlight. And, uh... Just set up your mirror. There's your mirror, and you could actually see the bottom of the carburetor and the screw holes. Um, you know, sometimes I had to look really through a small hole to look at it, but it works. And I bought a fuel filter. It's going to go in soon. I'm probably going to put it after the fuel pump. I'm not sure yet. Uh, just for now. Front carb did not leak, and it seems to be working great. 
DFASD seems to be working. And uh, that's about it. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. Okay, I popped the old float out. There's the hinge pin. You just pull it straight down. There's these two little uh, channels that, that you push into the clip. Um, this is the side that hits the needle valve. You can see it's slightly dimpled. And here's the new float. So I'm going to probably have to bend this tab up a little bit to uh, adjust the float height to 0.625. And here's my float bowl. I'm, st I'm soaking it in gasoline. I'm going to have to get a brush or something. But this thing had a lot of rusty sediment in it. Looks looking better now. And then I'm going to remove the uh, the needle valve. This is the new one. A couple of washers. And we'll take it from there. Okay, now I'm going to unscrew the old valve. The new one came with a couple of different washers. So if you... This will sit like this. And you can see the new valve works very smoothly just gravity making the the needle go in and out I'll do it slowly so when the float comes up it will press up on this and close it when the gas fills the float bowl, the float tab will do that and prevent any more fuel from entering the bowl. Okay, let's do it. Okay, I got my flashlight here and the mirror. Um, if you look carefully, you see the bottom of my wonderful carburetor with the float removed. And you could see the needle valve sitting over there on the left side. Oop, let me just set that up there and I'm gonna here's the needle valve, see it? Incidentally, for people who want to remove the whole carburetor, it looks like there's better access to the rear nuts with the uh float. Uh, bowl removed. Oh, I'm sorry for the shakiness here. It looks like there's uh, easier to access those rear nuts that mount the carburetor with the float bowl removed. But anyway, right now I'm just going to focus on removing this guy right here. Ah, okay, clean your mirror, people. Okay, because I uh, I uh, cleaned the mirror so you could see a little bit better the valve that I'm going to uh, replace. Okay, there it is. Yeah, I unscrew the valve. It's had a piece of fuzz on top. I'm not sure what that is. And you could see the little metal screen. And a couple of washers at the base. So I don't know if this was bad or not, but I'm going to replace it. I'll try to reuse the screen if I could. If not, I'll leave it off. Because I'm going to put in a fuel filter that should keep the fuel clean. Okay. Oh, just a quick correction. Um, there was just one washer on the old float. Just one washer there. And the new float came with um, these two. This one and this one. This is about the size of the old one as far as thickness. Okay, bye. Okay, I screwed in the uh, the new jet. Not the jet, the uh, valve. Popped in my float. Bent the tab. I had to bend it. I was uh, less than 
0.625 so the fault was going too far up so I had to bend the tab where is it oh this tab I bent up and you could oh there you go you could see it boom look at that perfect so I bent the little part at an angle this way my tab is flat to the valve okay so it's 0.625 it's hard for me to show you this but if you could just uh, see the my red mark is 0.625 and I'm against the body of the carb so it's perfect and now we're gonna put the bowl back on well I have to finish cleaning it first it's still uh, dirty so this just pushes in a nice little clip there there you go make sure these bumps are on the top and they're flat on the bottom on the floats at least that's the way the old one was <laughs> okay bye bye all right I finished cleaning the bowl with a wired brush there's still some little bit of brown in there but I don't think that's gonna make much of a difference here's the gasket this curved the part with the curved corners is the front of the carburetor so that goes towards the front so now the gasket, I'm not sure, it's got this little nub on it, so I'm going to have to match it up to the old one. I don't know, it's not symmetrical, so I don't know if it goes that way or, or this way. So I got to look into that. Okay, bye. Okay, the gasket, this gasket has that little piece on the, the right bottom corner. My old one does not. Now, it has to go on with that piece on the right side because you can't put it on this way because then this extra section sticking out will hit the, uh, the needle valve, the inlet valve. So it cannot go this way. It has to be installed this way. So, there you go gonna go that way my good one my old one is actually in pretty good shape I can always reuse this but I'm going to put this on this way so it's not it, you can't line it up the other way so it's got to go this way I'm ready to put the bowl on here's my weapons right there that's a good one on the right this is the one I got from uh, that uh, freight store and uh, all of these six bolts uh, uh oh yeah these six bolts are the same um, I read other things saying that they're different like some of the back ones are different maybe that's a different carburetor I'm not sure but I'll match them up make sure they are all the same they look to be the same they all have the washer and they look to be the same length and the same head as well okay putting the bowl on okay I have five out of the six screws in the float bowl I have all but the center middle screw now that one's hard to get because there's a coolant pipe running horizontally underneath the bowl and I haven't figured out a way to move that coolant pipe oh, I'll be focused here So, this is my quarter inch uh, wrench. I tucked a screw in it in the hopes I could get in there and push the screw up at least to get, get it through the gasket. The gasket kind of grips the screws, kind of holds them for you until you could get a screwdriver on it. But be careful, you know, put a pan under the car so if you drop a screw, it's right there in the pan. Okay, so I'm going to try this.